we're not far off from actually setting our new Nano Reef Aquarium up now. I made a conscious decision right from the start not to do what most people do, and that is just leap in, show the equipment, and put everything together in one video. To give you a better understanding of what everything is about keeping a Nano Reef Aquarium, I've broken it down, and in the last few episodes, I've shown you all the sort of supplies and equipment required for a successful reef system with explanations of what those pieces of equipment do and more importantly why we use them i would like to thank those that have followed this series so far for their patience in bearing with me on what for some people will have been a fairly dry series so far now looking back we've spent the bulk of this series talking about filtration you know, live rock, live sand, and their function in a nano reef aquarium. And today, what I want to focus on before we get into reef keeping proper is the last piece of that puzzle. I can't overemphasize that aquarium filtration for any aquarium, whether it be fresh water or salt water, tropical or cold water, the most important part of the life support system is filtration because without it, every aquarium is doomed. Now, moving to the filter chamber at the back of your aquarium. We have a 500 litre per hour circulation pump and the associated plumbing required to actually make that function as a circulation pump. I'm not going to go into this because the instructions are with your tank on how to rig this up. But the sole function of this pump is to draw water through the filter chambers which with this pump gives you a turnover rate of just under 10 times per hour and what i mean by that is that the pump will circulate water through your filter at a rate of about 10 times per hour the total tank volume so it's effectively emptying the tank pushing all the water through the filter and then back into the tank approximately 10 times an hour. This rate of circulation is the minimum required for a successful marine aquarium. Personally, I like to run it at two or three times that, and we will go on to uprating the pump at a later date. I will also be modifying the filter itself at a later date, but for the purposes of this series, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to stick with what we have. Well, almost stick with what we have. The filter itself consists of three chambers. The inlet at the top right hand side of the picture you're looking at now, where there's a weir that allows the water to come in from the tank. Fluval have reserved this for their protein skimmer. Personally, I don't use protein skimmers. I haven't used one for over 20 years. But that is maybe something we can touch on another time. The middle chamber is your filter media chamber. And this is where both your mechanical filtration takes place, i.e. straining out of particulate matter, and further biological filtration takes place. And it comes with a large black foam block with two cutouts in it. One of those cutouts will contain ceramic filter media for colonization of useful bacteria and the other will contain a marine grade activated carbon which is basically charcoal. Now any experienced reef keeper worth his salt will tell you you do not use activated carbon in a reef aquarium as a matter of course. It is a very useful tool if you have a specific water quality issue to address or you're needing to remove some sort of treatment or medication. All manufacturers of filters and systemized aquariums tend to include some of this with the package and more than likely they'll give you instructions to use it. Now arguably they do this for their benefit not yours. They know that people new to fish keeping will not have a full sort of grasp of the techniques required. You know, people are impatient or they won't follow recognised procedures. And activated carbon will provide a sort of a safety net for a while, which will cut down incidents of complaints from customers. It also provides the manufacturer with revenue because 
you know, if you read the instructions, they'll tell you that you need to keep coming back and buying more of it. And to that end, activated carbon is something of a double-edged sword. Generally speaking, it's made from a very dense, slow-growing hardwood, which has been, you know, heated up and turned into charcoal. It can also get a variant that is made from carbonized coconut shell, which is arguably more eco-friendly because it's a byproduct that has no other use. Charcoal is, if you like, a chemical sponge. It has an enormous internal surface area, which is capable of trapping all kinds of chemicals and elements that we found in our aquarium water. People will tell you that it will help with filtration, which it will, because it'll remove harmful compounds like ammonia and nitrate from your water quite efficiently, but there is an enormous catch with it. For a start, it's not selective. It doesn't decide to remove only harmful compounds and leave those valuable trace elements that you've spent so much money on with your salt mix. It will just remove all of them. And this is where manufacturers get a second bite of the cherry from you. Expensive bottles containing trace elements which you're constantly having to replace because that activated carbon is removing it. I'm sure you will have watched videos with reef keepers that use activated carbon as a matter of course. They also spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars a year or even pounds a year on expensive dosing systems and expensive dosing chemicals. Working on the assumption that it's the animals that keep in their aquarium that are removing those trace elements. They may be removing some of them but the activated carbon is removing the rest. Now, 20 years ago, it was always considered that a reef keeper that uses carbon or has to use carbon all the time is doing something seriously wrong. And I think the general excuse for using it seems to be today, certainly from videos that I've watched, is that it soaks up toxins released by corals in a sort of ongoing internal aquarium chemical warfare thing that's going on personally i think the solution to that is just good husbandry don't mix incompatible corals you know it's quite simple now the recommendation for using activated carbon is that you should remove it and change it with fresh carbon once a month the reason being that activated carbon doesn't tie those compounds that it's captured up forever once it's reached saturation point it starts to release them back into the water so you need to replace it fairly regularly and how regularly you really do need to change it is a bit of a moot point because that all depends on the stress loads that have been put on your aquarium now, when you do actually change that carbon for fresh carbon, you enter a danger zone. Because during those few weeks in your tank, it will have colonized with useful bacteria. And it will, during that time in your aquarium, also have been starving the bacteria on your biological filter media. You know, it's not rocket science. If you're using this stuff and it's soaking up the ammonia and nitrate, it's starving the bacteria on all your biological filter media, so those colonies will never fully mature. It is, of course, entirely up to you if you want to use it or not, but I do assure you that a properly matured and cycled reef aquarium that is run responsibly will run perfectly well without it. Having said that, do not throw the carbon that you get with the aquarium away it may come in handy one day keep it in its plastic wrapper somewhere safe just in case now fluval do supply some good quality ceramic filter media with this setup but they don't supply an awful lot of it as time goes on you will need to systematically replace this filter media but you can't do it all at once because obviously you then lose all your nitrifying bacteria so the best advice i can give you is go to your local aquatic store and buy a liter of the very best either ceramic filter media or sintered glass filter media avoid natural filter medias if you can they're not very good and a couple more filter bags 
and cram as much of that stuff as you possibly can into your foam so that it will still fit into the filter chamber. And you're aiming to have three times the amount of filter media that you really require to run the aquarium. The reason being that as the aquarium matures and it reaches sort of the six month stage where you start to have to look at replacing filter media, you can replace it a third at a time every six months without affecting your bacterial culture so you still have full filtration capacity even though you've replaced some of the media. You know, you need to be planning ahead at this stage to make things easier for you and easier for your fish and your corals later in the day. Right, that's it for this week. Next week we'll actually get on to setting the aquarium up, the part you've all been waiting for. Once again, thank you so much for supporting this channel and this current series that I'm making. Numbers of subscribers and views are gradually, steadily growing. I'm really grateful for your support. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have subscribed, hit the notification bell and that will inform you of any future uploads. I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. <laughs>